A few weeks ago I mentioned that I was going to start playing around with some weathering techniques. Now I've managed to get my paints organised and arranged so I can access them effectively, I'm going to get back to it. Now I will be honest, there are literally hundreds if not thousands of videos on YouTube that show a wide variety of techniques that can be used to create weathering effects on model trains, buildings, figures and any other scenery pieces that you can imagine. Now I have played around with some weathering techniques in the past before I started this channel following some of those videos. I've also tried some of my own techniques as well. So with that in mind I have decided to put together a video series in which I'm going to explore a variety of weathering techniques that I personally find really effective as well as results so you can see how they turn out. In this episode I'm going to be focusing on some rust techniques that can be used for any metal models. But first you may have noticed something slightly different. I've finally come out of the 80s. I've had my hair cut. The mullet has finally gone. <laughs> so what exactly is weathering? Quite simply, weathering is a term from geology that means the breaking down of rocks and minerals on Earth's surface. Yeah, it sounds quite boring. However, the term has been adopted by the model making community in general to basically describe the art of making a model, prop or piece of scenery look worn and well used. It's a stage where dirt, grime and general surface degradation is applied to a model making it more aesthetically pleasing and real. Now when I first got into model railways when it came to weathering I'll be honest I often thought why would you want to weather wagons or locos in the first place? Surely they look better when they're all shiny and new straight out the box. With most new items you buy we try and keep them in the best condition for as long as possible. However, when it comes to model railways and model making in general, we tend to go in the opposite direction. Rather than trying to keep everything looking new and clean, we try and make things look worn and used and dirty. And the reason for that is if you think a train is naturally a workhorse, it will be outside for about 90% of its life. It's only natural that it would get dirty, rusty, covered in grime and mud and just generally neglected cosmetically. Basically as long as it works people care more about the inside of a train rather than the outside. So when we build our model railways we want to emulate that as much as possible which is why we often spend the time and effort to weather everything. Now it would be really interesting to see your weathering attempts. If you've weathered any wagons or rolling stock, locos, cargo containers, silos or buildings, then please send me some photos of your work and I'll share them on the channel. Now you can obviously email them to me uh, using the email address or send them through some of my social media channels. It would be really, really interesting to see. As well as grime and dirt, rust tends to be a very common element in life. Generally speaking, with rust, the longer that an item has been corroding for, the darker the rust tends to be. Areas exposed to liquids such as rain, running water or regular spillages will generally start to rust first. The rust will then spread out from that point. For example, you would get more rust appearing on the top of a fuel wagon than you would underneath due to the rain. Also, the opening where the fuel is put into the container would generally be subject to more spillages, causing rust to form in these areas first. The rust would naturally form on metal underneath any paint, and then this paint on top would subsequently start to peel away. Therefore, when painting rust, it's best to try and mimic that effect as closely as possible, which is what I'm going to do on my model wagons. As you may already be aware, I have a fairly decent rake of yellow shell wagons. Well, this week I actually managed to pick up a couple of extra ones. Now, these are slightly different. Um, I got them for a very reasonable price uh, from a man on eBay. Thank you, Kevin. And I managed to get a hold of not two, but actually four. The only problem is only one of them has the shell livery on them which obviously is what I was going for. So I was thinking with the other ones that I've got, I might use them as practice for some weathering and see what I can do. Out of the four new wagons I bought, one of them had been painted completely black by the previous owner. I decided that I would try my hand at weathering this one as it didn't really match anything else I had. 
Before applying any paint to the wagon, I decided that I wanted to prime it with a base coat first. Now, I could have simply sprayed the primer over the model. However, these type of wagons are relatively easy to dismantle. So that's what I did. Simply remove the wheels first. They just click out by gently spreading the clips apart. However, be very careful that you don't break them. Once the wheels have been removed, you can then disconnect the chassis by lightly loosening these four clips underneath using a small flat screwdriver. The chassis will then separate from the fuel container. You should also find a small weight as well. The catwalk on top is held in by four clips, so carefully loosen these and remove it before separating both halves of the fuel container. I decided to give all of the outside surfaces that I was planning on painting a quick wipe down with some isopropyl alcohol to remove any dirt, dust or grime that was previously on the models. While I was cleaning the wagons I decided to give the wheels a good clean as well because no doubt with plenty of running they'll pick up loads of dirt from any tracks that they've been on so I thought while I had the cleaning stuff out may as well give it a quick clean as well. One thing I did notice is that both of the wagons that I was working on had metal wheels which is a bonus because when I do come to replace the wheels, any that have plastic wheels, I will be replacing for the metal ones. Simply because they do tend to run a lot better, they have less friction on the tracks, and also if you've got a little gap between the tracks, it makes that nice clackety clack sound, which obviously every model railway should have. Once I'd cleaned all of the parts off, I then used a basic grey primer, which I bought from a pound shop, uh, just to cover all the models in a priming paint, which I then left to dry overnight. Once all of the parts I had painted with primer had dried, I then put the fuel storage containers back together. I made sure they were lined up correctly before adding a few drops of super glue to the joins to keep them together. I then wanted to add some heavily rusted areas onto the wagons. I chose areas where rust would normally be exceptionally heavy and applied a few drops of super glue before I sprinkled some fine sand onto the super glue. The super glue dries and bonds almost instantly when the sand is sprinkled on top. Any excess can then be shaken or lightly brushed away with a paintbrush. Now this works really well as it creates spots where the rust has heavily corroded and bubbled out from underneath the paint. Now I have used this method in the past to create heavily rusted areas on previous models such as a silo, a shipping container and an abandoned scrap car project that I'm currently working on. Now it's best to use this technique sparingly. Focus on small spots where heavy rust would naturally form. For these models, I applied heavy rust spots near the fuel opening and at the bottom of the fuel tank where fuel would have naturally leaked, and some other spots where heavy rust would normally occur. I will be the first to admit the models look terrible at this stage. However, we need to apply paint on top of the wagon to replicate the rust. So don't worry, it will look better. One of the easiest and most effective ways to make a model appear rusty is to use various paints in different colours. Now you can use a wide variety of paints or weathering powders, however I tend to use acrylic paints as they are very effective, available in a large variety of colours, easy to get hold of and are very inexpensive. By using a sponge and stippling a mixture of browns, reds, oranges and yellows ranging from dark to light, you can produce a very realistic looking finish. The colours and types of paint that you use is completely up to you. However, I have found an effective rust technique can be achieved with the following colours. Black and burnt sienna mixed together for the first layer. Brown umber for the second layer. Burnt sienna and then layers of deep red, scarlet, vermilion, orange, yellow ochre and mid yellow for the occasional highlights. This range of colours may sound excessive and quite expensive, however 
All of these colours are available as part of a basic acrylic starter set which is available from B&M stores for £5.99. The Works Art Store also has a similar acrylic starter set available for £8 as well. Again, all of the colours I have mentioned are within that set. Now, if you are interested in those uh, starter sets, I will put a link in the description down below to both of them so you can check them out. I started by applying the darkest colours, in this case the burnt sienna mixed with the black, pretty much all over the model using a sponge. By stippling the paint on, I achieved a rough texture which looks better as rust than brush strokes or by using an airbrush. Now this technique is absolutely great if you're like me and you're not a precise modeler. It really doesn't have to be that neat. There will be extra layers of paint added over the top afterwards, so don't worry about how it looks too much at this stage. It is best to let this layer dry before you start applying the next layer of colour. Now what you can do if you want to speed up the process is by carefully using a hairdryer to dry your paint. Just don't let your missus catch you using a hairdryer. As you can see, the paint will then look a lot lighter once it has dried. Then, all I did was repeat the same process with progressively lighter shades of paint. I used a burnt umber. Followed by a burnt sienna. and then a couple of shades of red before applying the orange shades and lastly a few small highlights using the yellows. I also made sure that as the layers got lighter I applied progressively less paint to each layer. The idea is that it will blend in with the previous layers, not cover it up completely. Now here's a quick tip for you, if you are painting a model you can use a melted glue stick and stick it to the underneath of a model and it will allow you to hold it without getting paint on your fingers. You can also stick the other end to a block of wood and have a hands-free way of painting your model. The glue stick will then be easily removed from the model without causing damage once you're finished. Once I was happy with the final paint job I then dried it using a hairdryer and then I applied a coat of clear matte varnish just to lock in all the paints and protect them. Now this is the one I particularly use, however you can use a wide variety of clear matte varnishes. Just make sure that it is a matte finish and not a glossy finish, otherwise the model will look too shiny and it will not give you the effect that you're looking for. If you're enjoying the content I'm creating on this channel, you can show your support in several different ways. You can support me by hitting the like button, sharing my videos and subscribing to the channel. In addition, you can also show support by visiting my Buy Me A Coffee page down below and making a donation which goes towards creating more videos like this one in the future. All for the price of a coffee. I need a new one. Any donation helps and it's greatly appreciated. Now, let's finish this model, shall we? One of the characteristics of rust is that it tends to work itself under paint and then this will peel and flake away. I wanted to include this look on my models and there is a fairly simple method of achieving this effect by using PVA glue. Now if you ever worked with PVA glue you know that if you get it on your hands and let it dry it can be peeled off. So with that in mind I decided that this would allow me to create an effective paint peeling technique for the model. I started by applying PVA glue to the areas on the model where I want the paint to peel off. I used a sponge and dabbed the PVA glue on fairly thickly. As well as PVA glue, another product you can also use is the Vallejo Liquid Mask. It is a latex type material that you can apply to areas you wish to mask before painting. When applying the outer layer of paint, you can use whatever colour you wish, and this can be applied by a paintbrush, or, like in this case, I used an airbrush. Now this would form the outer layer of paint, which would be peeling as the rust appears. Once the outer layer has been completed and dried, you can then use your fingers to gently rub away at the PVA underneath, revealing the rust paint effect. By leaving some half peeled off, you get the really effective peeling paint effect. After comparing both the PVA and the liquid mask, I found that the liquid mask came off in this model slightly easier than the PVA, but it was cleaner. The PVA peeled off in bits, whereas liquid mask came off in one piece. Depending on the finish that you want, you can choose which option 
you want to use. All that's left now is to add any additional final touches as you wish, such as grime marks, rust streaks or fuel spillages. Paint the chassis and catwalk, reassemble the model, then give the model a final coat with the clear matte varnish to protect it. And now the model is complete. So what do you think of these final results? I must admit, I am very pleased with how they've turned out. I'm definitely converted when it comes to my thoughts on weathered wagons and rolling stock. In fact, if I compare the weathered wagon with the original shell wagon, which I previously enjoyed, I now feel the original looks more like a toy than an actual model. I will definitely be working on weathering more of my shell wagons in the future, and as part of the series, I will be exploring a variety of different methods which can be used, such as creating a patina effect using salt or cheap hairspray. Hmm. On top of that, as part of the series, I'm going to be exploring how to create grime and general dirt on a model, weathering on bricks, rocks and stonework, creating weathered roads and paths, and much more. So if you are enjoying this video, please hit the like button, share and subscribe to make sure you don't miss out. Obviously, if you know any other techniques that I should be checking out, please let me know, drop me a message in the comments down below, and obviously, I will check them out. Now, if you like these models, and you would like the opportunity to win one of them, then I will be announcing a competition on my birthday, which is the 26th of February. The competition will give you details on how to enter, as well as the questions asked, so, if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, make sure you do so, so you don't miss out on that. As well as that, I will be showing you many more weathering techniques, as I've mentioned, and in the meantime, you check out these videos.